<laughs> okay, so if we start this one, uh, this problem, so let's go ahead and work, uh, work on this problem together, so listen up please. All right, well actually if you want to keep working that's fine if you don't want to look up here, but just be quiet. Yeah. Um, so we see here using, um, I don't know, just sort of logic, I guess, that we have to see if this car can stop in 120 meters. So um, let's see. If we do this the same way that we did the last one, then we start off saying A is negative 10 meters per second squared. So this is negative 10. And then move this over here, take the integral of both sides, and you get V is negative 10 T uh, plus V zero. So the V final is going to be um, negative 10 times the time plus the initial velocity. Does that part make sense? Yes, no? Yes. Okay. Um, gosh. Yeah, I guess we can go ahead and do, we can do it again and say that um, oh, yeah, so I guess this is actually negative 10t plus uh, 50, right? The actual value is 50 there. <clears throat> so then we can say dx dt is equal uh, to negative 10t plus 50. Uh, dt is over here, and then take the integral of both sides. And so, whoops, we'll get dx. <coughs> You just get x equals um, negative 5t squared uh, plus 50t um, plus xr. And xr was that position up there, wherever it started. So this right here, this constant, um, if it came, like if this, I don't know, if his brakes were instantaneous, then that would be zero. But then since it's not instantaneous, you can just use the 30 meters that we got from using, is that 30? I think it's 30, right? Yeah. Yeah. The 30 meters we got from using the logic based on his delay time. Yeah. Um, why is it 50t and not 25t? Uh, 50t, oh, because if you take the integral of a number, like. Oh, yeah. No. The integral of, yeah. yeah. Oops. Okay, so then from this, the question is, uh, will he stop at 120? Or if you got rid of this over here, either way. Um, so then we could say the 120 should equal that. Well, no, actually, this would be the whole thing. This would be the 150. So see, if we do that, then you have to see if the, the T's are real. Probably. I don't know, if I was doing this on a test or something, I pro in all honesty, I probably wouldn't have done this. I would have just looked at this right here and calculated for zero velocity, right? And then from that, that would have given me the time to, it took to stop. Yeah? Yeah, like I did it with that. I found the time to stop, then you put it into the position. Can you see how far it counts? Oh, okay, yeah, so then you need to do it. Okay, that's cool. Once again, the, the way I generally operate, because so many years of teaching this with algebra, all those equations are just in my head. So I just use them. But yeah, the, the better way would be to do this and then get that. Um, also, on your formula sheet, you have this equation already. So if you want to use, like, I mean, it's, what is it, like 30 seconds to do this derivation. But if you want, you already have, like, this equation right here, we have this, right? This is the, what is it, the first equation on your formula sheet? Think is that, that one on your formula sheet? Yeah. yeah. And then this is like the second one. So you could do this over and over again if you want. But the easy, fast way to do it is just to plug it in the equation. So yeah. <clears throat> so there you go. Any questions on that one? Okay, so just to see what comes out, um, when we do this, uh, we have zero here. So then we get T is what five t is five seconds so we get a t of stopping of five seconds and then the x um 
if I use that equation again, uh, negative 5t squared plus 50t uh, plus xr. So then 5 here makes that negative 125 and positive 250. So that becomes positive 125 plus 30 becomes 155. Game over. Right? So the total distance of stopping for this guy is 155 meters. And he will be in the strict and rough hands of the law in a few seconds. Any questions? Anyone at all? Okay, well, excellent, all right.